no matter how your time is spent on the water. Wholesale Marine has the parts and supplies that you need at the price you want. At Wholesale Marine, our associates have over 500 years of combined boating experience to help you make the most of your time on the water. Visit WholesaleMarine.com. So this time of year, if you're gonna go offshore, it doesn't hurt to get to the edge of the reef and go ahead and start trolling for some wahoo. It's just that time of year right now where they're slowly starting to come in. So if you're gonna make that trek this time of year to go offshore, hit the edge of the reef first for wahoo. Just give it a try, put, put a half hour into it, nothing happens. Just go ahead and bust offshore because you gotta come out here anyways. So might as well hit it, try it. Those wahoo like to run this edge of the reef. Okay, so once you hit that edge, which is about 100 foot, and it starts to slowly taper off, that's what you kind of want to troll because they run that whole edge. They're trying to find food, they're trying to eat. So if you know there's some wrecks out here, your wrecks is really what you want to troll over because the wrecks are what's holding bait. And those wahoo are going to hang around those wrecks. So basically what I do, like simple, simple setup for this, I run a 50 wide on a bent butt and I'll run these guys right here. These little bonitas. These guys will actually get down to about 30, 40 foot. Those wahoo tend to sit down more in the water column than they are on the surface. So we're kind of presenting something in that water column for them. Wahoo love reds, they love purples, they like dark colors, okay? The good thing about these is, is if you troll them at a decent speed, 10 to 15 knots, um, they tend to miss this and really hit more of the back end of the lure. If you slow troll it, then you're gonna have a more chance of them clipping this. So you can troll these really fast. Sometimes you can troll these up to 17, 18 mile an hour. We're just gonna start with this bright, just kind of see if we can get one fired up. So just keep the boat in gear. That way everything stays nice and straight. When you put your lures out, you're spread out. You want these far. You wanna put these far behind the boat, okay? Because what you wanna do, you wanna get these lures out of the whitewash of your motor. Okay, if it's in the whitewash, they see the whitewash, they see the lure, it kind of almost hides the lure. You wanna get this thing sitting out there in clean blue water. Use the anchor trusted by professionals. Fortress anchors are designed lighter, set faster, and provide stronger holding power than the competition. For the best value in anchoring safety and convenience, use the legendary Fortress anchor. What you're gonna do is just slowly come up with the drag until it stops clicking. That's it. You go full like that, all you're gonna do is lose fish. You still wanna be able to do this. And as you pick up speed, it'll slowly rip drag. You just keep tightening it, tightening it until it stops clicking. I like to troll for Wahoo between like 10 and 15 knots. You can slow troll them, but they're a fast fish, so there's kind of a reaction bite, so they're trying to chase something. Now, say you're trolling and you get hooked up. Do not bring the boat back to neutral and fight the fish. You will lose that wahoo. You gotta keep the boat in gear. If that fish eats, you're gonna back her down. The boat's gonna stay right here while that guy fights the fish. Keep that hook set the whole time. Because all Wahoo's trying to do when he gets hooked up is shake that hook off. And they shake it very easily. So if you come off plane and you go right to neutral and you're fighting that fish, you will lose that fish. Oh, That's pretty. That was a hit right there. That was a tap right there, boy. Fish on. That may be a Wahoo. Got the gap, JC. Oh, come on, right. it's coming in. Let's get ready, JC. Wahoo! 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 Wahoo. Got him! Woo. Good job! All right! Nice. Just watch him. He's got teeth like like a big king. That thing is lit up.
We're on the Marathon Homes, so this is the tuna grounds. Three things out here you can do to catch these tuna. Live bait for them, which is the toughest because it's tough to get the bait certain times of the year. This bait's good because they, they start coming through in the fall when the water gets a little cooler, so this bait's easier to get, but in the summertime, you're not gonna get this bait. So in the summertime, you're not gonna be able to live bait these tuna. You're gonna have to either troll for them or you're gonna have to jig for them, okay? So it's either live bait, troll, or jig. We have a bunch of pilchards here, so what we're gonna do is bring the live bait out here to the hump. You know, they're naturally feeding on, you know, the krill coming up, you know, and that's why all those bait fish are there. Is that current's running from the west to the east, and it acts like a slope right there. So it's pushing all that nutrients and bait up there so the bait fish are feeding there. We're gonna throw out some scoops of pilchards. That's gonna be our bait ball. Next thing you know, you're gonna see the tunas boiling behind the boat. We're gonna start out with two people fishing right out the back, flatlining the pilchards. When they hit, just let them eat, shut it and whine, then got them on. Then that's when we'll start pilching out the other rods and then be hooking them on and then get multiple hookups just like that. So what I do is we're gonna go down to 30 pound test. I like to run longer leaders. I think to the fish it's less visual. It gets this line away from them pretty far to where they're not seeing it. Now look right here, that's all tuna right here. Yep. That's all tuna on the screen. So out here we're gonna use 40Js. Okay, these are called 3407s. This is my staple hook. I use this hook for everything. I do not like circle hooks. I hate circle hooks with a passion. Um, J-Hook's been around since fishing has been fishing. Doesn't fail, it works. Why change it? If you're headed out for a day on the water, make sure you visit Tom Thumb Food Stores. Get your food, drinks, fuel, and ice all in one place. Perfect for your on-the-go Florida lifestyle. Fast. Fresh, friendly, Tom Thumb Food Stores. All right, boys, let me get three of you. Bait up, up under the chin, out the top of the head. Just have them ready. All right, slowly start feeding your line out. Just nice and slow. See, there, there they are, they're busting. Feed your line. Keep your tip low to the water. Looked over here, Mike. Attaboy, good job. Yeah. There you go. Okay. There you go. Nice. Oh, right oh, they're busting, busting, busting. Yep, keep your keep your tip low. Oh yeah. Keep feeding it. That a girl. Good work. There we go, there's a black. Yep. Get him in, get him in, get him in, get him in. That's a good one. Open your bail for me. Good job. There they are, they're boiling right there. Feed those blinds, feed them lines. Perfect hook set. Right in the nose. That's a good skippy. Somebody gets a bait out here. There are some black fins right over here on this side. Nice one there. Hell yeah. Like, let's get a picture of that. Now look at that shark right there on him. Yeah. Good job, buddy. So what we did, we just made our drift. We were live chumming, had the black fin tunas boiling behind the boat. Caught one that was 30 pounds, monster fish. We're using 30 pound fluorocarbon leader with 30 pound power pro grade 
on our Shimano Saragossa 8000s and using a 3-0 or a 4-0 live bait hook, depending really on the size of the bait. So you saw, you saw him crash a couple times and my filter was running like crazy. I could feel it just like jigging all over the place. And finally one ate it. It was weird though, it was a weird hit. He hit it and started darting hey, straight in the boat. Yeah, let me get a picture of that one. Right. Hell yeah. Look at that, we're making fun of you, you know? We're making fun of you for, you know, oh yeah, it's gonna die of old age. Happens to be a stud. Good job, guys. Tuna tonight. No matter how your time is spent on the water, Wholesale Marine has the parts and supplies that you need at the price you want. At Wholesale Marine, our associates have over 500 years of combined boating experience to help you make the most of your time on the water. Visit WholesaleMarine.com. All right, now look, on these jigs, there's a split ring and there's a solid ring. You gotta tie these jigs to the solid ring. That line will go through the split and over time it'll work it off and you'll just lose your jig. So you're always gonna attach it to the split ring, okay? And you're gonna do the same knot, your uni. When you're dropping them, just keep your tips low. Don't touch the line, just let them flow. You gotta pay attention as they drop because sometimes you don't have to jig it. As they're dropping it, that tune is gonna hit it on the drop. As soon as he hits it, that line's just gonna stop coming off that spool. That's when you know you're on. Close the bail, keep the tip low, reel as fast as you can to get tight, and then you can start lifting up, okay? Go ahead and drop them. This I'm doing about a 60 second count. 60 seconds gets you down to about 250 feet. Oh God, there he is. There you go. Oh, there he is. So the whole point of tuna fishing is that has that line has to stay tight no matter what. It cannot be any slack in that line, 100%. So when I do this, I actually on tuna I do more reeling than I do lifting. I do very little lifting. I'm I'm almost coming just below my chin and coming back down. Below my chin, coming back down. You never want to take that pole to the tip of the moon. Yeah, these are good. They're fun fish. We need some sushi. Some <laughs> sushi. Yeah. How are you eat? How are you gonna eat tonight? <laughs> Not quite big enough for the gas, but he is a nice fish. Good butterball. Good butterball. Good butterball. That's a good black fin, bub. That's a great black fin for the jig right there. That's the size we're looking for on the jig too. And one monster deserves a monster. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go.